Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey. Unity has just launched their Unity 2024 gaming report. These usually are filmed with tons of really useful info, tons of very interesting stuff. So let's quickly go through it and see all the main highlights. Unity sponsored this video to do this summary and also to let you know about the recently released awesome Mega City Metro sample. This is a complete multiplayer game sample. Like we're going to see in a bit, multiplayer is a big trend for the future. This sample has tons of features, it supports 128 players, it's cross-platform, it has interpolation, prediction, and lag compensation. It incorporates many of the Unity multiplayer tools like game server hosting, matchmaker, vbox, and lobby. So this is a really great, really complete sample. You can inspect all the source code to see how it all works. Go ahead and download it for free with the link in the description, and now back to the gaming report. This report is split into five different trends that are shaping game development. So the first one is devs are adopting AI tools to save time. And yep, 2023 won't go down in history as the year that AI was suddenly everywhere. And that's apparently true in game development as well, with 62% of studios using AI workflows, mainly to prototype quickly and for concepting asset creation and world building. It's obviously no surprise seeing that AI is one of the main trends. The second trend is how studios are diversifying their revenue approaches. And apparently how, as in-app purchase average revenue per daily active user declines, in-app advertising is on the rise. Now this is actually something that does surprise me. I pretty much only play premium games, I pretty much never play anything on mobile. So it does surprise me to see that apparently in-app purchases are going down and ads and games are on the rise, so that is definitely very interesting. I wonder what is the mix on these stats between premium games like PC console games and mobile games. That's definitely very interesting. Then trend number three, studios of all sizes are shipping to more platforms. And yep, this definitely does make sense. The more platforms you can get your game on, the better your odds of finding success overall. I must say for me personally, my last game, Dinky Gardens, so far it is still only on PC, only on Steam, but I've actually been in the process of putting the game on Xbox. This is going to be the first game that I've ever made that is available on the console. I had to pause that for a while while I was working on my C-Sharp course, but now that it's done, I definitely want to get back to it. While multi-platform reach adds challenges, more devs are deciding it is worth it, especially indies. So if you are making games, remember there's more to games than just PC, just Steam. Then trend number four, devs prioritize multiplayer games despite greater complexity and cost. For many people, the social dimension of gaming is a must, and studios are responding to this demand. In 23, mobile-only games with multiplayer features have 40% more monthly active users than single-player games, and multiplayer gaming revenue grew by 2.3 billion, that's a 10% lift. This is definitely very interesting. For me, personally, I prefer to play just single-player games, but I do know that multiplayer games are massive. If you make a multiplayer game, your odds of finding massive success definitely increase, whereas on single-player games you have sort of a ceiling, sort of a cap, whereas on multiplayer games you have something like Lethal Company, which is a massive monumental hit. It definitely would not be this big if it wasn't in multiplayer. And trend number five, the industry is building stronger brands by extending engagement. Studios are looking to extend the lifespans of their game IPs by deepening audience attachment. Analytic services used to tailor updates to players increased by 44%. So basically developers using data in order to improve their games based on how the players are actually playing them. And personally what I find most interesting is, while 27% of developers we polled report incorporating user-generated content, UGC, into their games to invite greater engagement. I do think that if you are an indie game developer, this is one of the best ways to increase the ceiling potential for your game. If you add some kind of user-generated content, like something as simple as a level editor or something a lot more complex. For example, in Terraria and Minecraft, these are mega hits, specifically because of all the user-generated content that is built on top of it. And if you want to add user-generated content to your game, Unity also has a really interesting tool for it. I made a tutorial video if you want to learn how that works. So these are the five main trends, and then we can see all the data inside of this report. As you can see, this is definitely massive. There's tons and tons of info here. So I'm really only going to go through some highlights, and I invite you to check the link in order to read all of this information in your own time. The big trend is AI and how studios want to work faster and more efficiently. Some really interesting stats, how the average time to launch for games has increased from 218 days in 22 to 304 days in 23. So nowadays there is so much competition, you really need your game to be excellent. And building excellence takes time, so it makes sense that games have taken longer and longer to develop. So because of that, it's no wonder that they are busily exploring tools to speed up production, and one of those tools obviously being AI. And in 2023, Unity study showed that 71% of studios that are using AI say that it's improved their delivery and operations. These are very interesting stats, and over here we have some more detail. So how studios are using AI, in what specific areas. And the first one is actually interesting, it's for improving character animations. I haven't yet seen that many AI animation tools, so I wonder what this is about. The only one that I know is Cascador, so I wonder if this is the main one they're using. And Unity themselves are working on an AI tool, Muse Animate. I have to say this is definitely one of the use cases that I'm personally most interested for in terms of AI. The Asset Sword does have tons of animation packs, but finding specifically what you want when you want something extremely specific, 
it takes such a long time in order to go through all these packs. So for prototyping, I think being able to do text to animation, I think that is really quite useful. So it's interesting to see how 46% of the studios are using it specifically to improve character animations. But then something surprising to me is over here, 37% are using AI to write code or speed up code writing. Now, the reason why I say this is interesting to me is because personally I've used AI code writing a little bit, and I have to say my opinion was definitely not positive. Basically, when I tried it, I found that the suggestions that the code would give me were always very strange. They were never exactly what I was trying to get. So when I tried, basically it meant that I was writing code, and then my brain was basically being broken by having to read the suggestions that the code completion was doing. And since most of the time it was not at all what I was trying to do, because of that I was basically having to break my brain in order to read the suggestion, delete the suggestion, and go back to working as I was. So personally, when I tried using AI to write code, I did not enjoy it. It was not a positive experience. However, that was also back when AI was in its infancy. I think I tried it over a year ago. So maybe nowadays things are better. If 37% of studios are using it to write code and speed up code writing, then I guess that means it must have some use case. Then at 36%, we have generating artwork and game levels. I'm actually surprised that this one is a little bit low. Then writing and narrative design, automated playtesting, adaptive difficulty, and in-game text and voice chat moderation. This one also seems a bit low because AI seems perfect for in-game text and voice chat moderation. Yeah, in general, already a surprising high amount of use case for AI in various studios. 71% of studios that report using AI say it's improved their delivery and operations. One of the main use cases for AI is to help you when prototyping. And apparently most studios keep their prototypes either under a month, above a week, or under three months. I have to say three months for making a prototype seems quite excessive. But I guess when you have a studio with tons and tons of people, then at that point you really only want to involve the entire team when you are really sure that you are going to pursue that idea. So I guess the bigger your studio, it makes sense that your prototypes become more and more complex. And again, for the prototyping stage, I do think that's where AI really shines. And in terms of why studios don't embrace AI, Apparently the reason is lack of time or know-how is the biggest blocker to AI tool adoption. So most people have some interest but not enough time. Some people don't have the technical skills, others don't know that it's possible, and others don't know the purpose. So yep, since AI is so new, it is still very difficult in order to figure out all the various use cases for it. There are many things it can do, but it's also tricky in order to figure out which one of those use cases is actually useful to you. Using AI just because you want to use AI, that's really not very helpful. It's really just a tool, so it's really only meant to be used in such a way that it does help you make your games. There are some nice tips on how AI could help you. So first, reduce tedious production work. So delegate monotonous tasks like resizing, upscaling, and fixing resolution issues. That is definitely an interesting use case if you have a ton of strange assets. Then to prototype in your own style. This is interesting given how many tools nowadays do have style guides that they can follow. So you can generate multiple assets all following the same style. That is usually the biggest problem when you use some kind of AI or even just standard assets. The issue is that they really don't fit together. But using style guides can definitely help make it look a bit more cohesive. Then to iterate with speed and ease. This is really what I find the most useful use case for AI. Just being able to very quickly get a prototype up and running. Then find and distill resources quickly. This one can be useful if you're in the learning stage. Chatting with an AI can definitely help you learn a little bit. Then to test and troubleshoot your code. Or build innovative new features with AI models. Or run AI models directly on user devices. See if there are definitely plenty of use cases for AI. Plenty of ways in which can help you make better games and make them faster. And right now there's already quite a lot of resource that Unity has made and they're continually making a bunch more. Then on turn 2, which is how studios are diversifying their revenue approaches. Like I said, this is definitely not an area that I'm very familiar with. I just make premium games, just pay once and that's it. But apparently looking at these quick charts, apparently mobile gaming is sustaining growth, so that's good I guess. Median mobile play retention is slightly down worldwide. In-app revenue purchases are also down. Pay rates are also decreasing. Purchase transactions and average spend per payer remain steady. IAA revenue is way up year over year. I'm not sure what is IAA. Then simulation, casual, and puzzle games are seeing growth. Games with diverse ad strategies show higher engagement. And games using both reward videos and offer wall improve retention. So yeah, like I said, this is not my area, so I can't really comment much on all of this. But if you are into making mobile games, definitely check out this entire report. There's a ton of info over here that I'm sure will be helpful to you. On trend 3, studios of all sizes are shipping to more platforms. Yep, if you make your game, if you can reach more people by just making a different build, that is objectively a good thing. More games are being built on 3 plus platforms, so that's a pretty sizable increase from 22 to 23. From 33,000 games to 44,000, that is a ton of games. For the platform choices, it seems that the majority is mobile and desktop. Then a bunch more on console, and then way down here is VR, web browser, and social network game. However, apparently developers are split on multi-platform rollout strategies. So that's a pretty even split between simultaneous, staggered, and no rollout strategy. In my case, my advice for indie devs kind of like me, so solo or a very small team, one to five, 
In that, I would probably say that staggered release, that probably makes a lot more sense. Unless, of course, you can manage to get a deal that requires you to do a simultaneous rollout. I say that just because it's much easier to manage just one release as opposed to multiple releases at the same time. That is definitely quite tricky. Developers are prioritizing cross-platform play. Now, this is definitely great to see. If you are going to put your game on multiple platforms, and if your game is something like multiplayer, it definitely helps for those people to be able to play between all the platforms. It's really great to see 95% of studios above 50 people are using cross-platform. Then on Trend 4, devs prioritize multiplayer despite greater complexity and cost. However, at the same time, while I would say definitely great complexity to make a multiplayer game as opposed to a single player, thanks to the tools nowadays, making multiplayer games is really much easier than it ever was. I made a video on exactly this topic, on how with all of these tools it makes it so much easier to handle multiplayer games. But on the other hand, there is also a lot of competition. So studios focus on multiplayer games. Over here we have 62% on multiplayer. So that's a ton of studios making a ton of multiplayer games. And again, all of those multiplayer games require a ton of time from all the players. Usually what happens in multiplayer is pretty much a winner takes all. So everybody plays Fortnite, not many people play the second game. And it's interesting how Couch Co-op is here. It's only 6%, but still, nice to see. Here's a nice quote. As competition and market saturation increases, it's hard to succeed with a multiplayer game. It's attractive to be on as many platforms as possible to be able to meet players and their friends wherever they are throughout the day. You want to make it as convenient as possible for them to reach the game. So yep, multiplayer and multi-platform kind of go hand in hand. If you can make a game that works both on PC, consoles, and mobile, then yeah, players can play your game from pretty much anywhere. And in terms of multiplayer gaming revenue, it does continue to rise. So 24 billion in 22 to 28 billion now in 24. Then some interesting tips on how to scale your multiplayer game. So the first one is find the fun fast and keep iterating. This is probably the most important one. Since multiplayer games are usually all about the core gameplay loop, you're constantly doing the same thing over and over again. Because that is really important that you find the fun in that core loop and then keep iterating upon it. Then another one important one is don't underestimate the cost of re-architecture. Meaning if you define that your game is going to be peer-to-peer, -peer, definitely remember that if later on you want to change the dedicated server, that is going to require quite a significant cost. So you should probably establish what architecture you're going with, either dedicated server or peer-to-peer. -peer. Definitely decide that earlier on in the dev cycle. And of course, prioritize on performance. Nobody likes playing a laggy multiplayer game. Player communication is key, so having some ways for your players to communicate with one another, that is definitely useful. And consider play retention and community help. Basically, if you're going to make a multiplayer game, then you have to have some kind of community management. Check out my video to learn about the many multiplayer tools that Unity has. And trend 5, the industry is building stronger brands by extending engagement. Saying here, there is no such thing as set it and forgetting in game development. It is essential to start planning live ops, content rollout, and update strategies right from the start. Again, this is another thing that I really don't have much experience with. For me, most of my games are one and done. I've tried doing a few DLCs for one of my games, but it didn't really work out too well, so I haven't tried it too much. So this is really more advice for bigger studios as opposed to solo or 1-5 to five indie game developers. Developers begin planning between production and pre-launch. Studios test more markets and offer new content frequently. Most developers update their game for 1-2 to two years. That's interesting. Players are making devs take toxic communities seriously. Always a big problem in live service games. Studios favor daily rewards and missions as engagement techniques. Live op services take an average of 4 months to see significant use. That's an interesting one. And user generated content is a hot topic. This is the one that even if you are making a single player game, you should definitely still look into it. Normally implementing some kind of workshop support with custom characters or custom levels, usually that isn't too laborious. And if you do it right, and if your players pick up the game, that can definitely bring your game to a second life. In a recent survey, 52% of US gamers say that the ability to generate content gets them to play longer, while 34% would make content, and 31% say they would spend money on downloadable content on a game with UGC. So in conclusion, in 2023, developers looked for stability. Persistent economic uncertainty led studios toward new technologies to increase efficiency, and they tried to maximize game awareness through diversified monetization strategies, expanded platform releases, multiplayer functionality, and engagement tactics. This past year was definitely very difficult for game developers. So many layoffs on so many studios, even on successful studios. Staying up to date with these trends can hopefully help you find success. In general, here are the five trends that we predict will shape 2024 and beyond. So AI use in the gaming industry will deepen and become normalized. Mobile studios will continue expanding to PC and consoles. There will be greater demand for extended reality games. That's interesting. Developers will explore new business model and revenue streams. And cloud services will become integral to games by improving studio efficiency. So definitely lots and lots of really interesting data in this report. I highly encourage you to check the link in the description and go download it. There's a mountain of information inside of this beyond what I covered here. Basically the goal with reading stuff like this is so that you can be much more informed, which in turn will hopefully help you make better decisions, to hopefully help you make better games and find success with them. Alright, so I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.